Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. I'm kind of uh, picking up right where I left off at the uh, end of the live stream. This is uh, what I have kind of called uh, Project Origami, or uh, the Origami Glider, and it is destined for Venus. And here it is in its stowed position, just uh, testing for clearances and trying to figure out a solution for vertical stabilizers and uh, also for engines. So I've added these two little fuel tanks here uh, on the fixed portion of the wing to house a, a little bit of extra fuel. We've upped our engine count from two to three. And uh, spacing them out like this also makes it a little easier to mount this thing. Uh, I was having some problems with things starting to clip and maybe causing some problems, but uh, we'll give it a spangly paint job. And then uh, we need to give it a means to communicate with anything in orbit so it can relay signals back to Earth. And we also need to power it. Um, obviously, for something that's going to be moving through the atmosphere potentially rapidly, RTGs are about our only solution, despite the fact that uh, Venus is uh, very easy to get uh, solar power at, considering you've got uh, constant daylight for half the year, more or less. Anyway, uh, I decided to go with two, with two RTGs because that's uh, what we will need to power our uh, avionics core. And I'll mount them to the front here and uh, eventually get them locked into place after deciding that, you know, yeah, this uh, center mass, center lift doesn't look so bad. Yeah, there. That's even better with them tucked into their actual position. Not bad. All right, and then we'll move on to science equipment. Uh, not a whole lot of room for mounting things on this little guy, but we can just go ahead and mount a line of experiments down the spine. We're going to forego the seismic experiment because uh, when this little guy touches ground, his mission is pretty much over, and hopefully he will have hit two biomes. We will give him a goo sample container because, you know, hey, why not? I think uh, while flying over Venus biome, whatever, is probably a biome that uh, is a little difficult to hit. I know we've got high atmosphere, but we don't have low atmosphere. And, of course, we will set it all to an action group. Yeah, it's not half bad. And it stows nicely, deploys nicely, nothing is being interfered with. So, uh, in interest of just survivability, uh, I have decided to add some wheels um, for no other real reason than I don't want to just plow him into the ground when he's done. I mean, I know that's kind of his fate, and it might be what happens anyway, but I thought some wheels just, they just seemed polite. <laughs> How about that? So, uh, give him some wheels, make sure nothing hits. Alright, that's, uh, that looks pretty good. This thing's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I'm very happy with this. So, uh, we'll take him out for, to the runway for uh, just a very quick test run. Make sure uh, everything uh, moves smoothly. Yeah, except we're swamped in concrete. And the engines are firing. Ah, the fuel level is low. That is interesting. And we're not really going anywhere. But uh, that's not a big surprise. Yeah, you can see the engines are, in fact, firing. And uh, the... The deployed doesn't cause it to break, which is good. So let's get uh, back to the space plane hangar. I'm pretty satisfied with this. I mean, more or less. So next thing to do is to take him over to the VAB and mate him to a delivery system and give it a test run. So we'll just uh, go ahead and try to load him up here from the folder. I mean, eventually. Oh, these things take forever to load. Space plane hangar, there we go. Oh, and I'll learn my alphabet. There he is. Fantastic. All right, and we'll pick him up, take him to the top. And so the next uh, problem is uh, how to introduce him into the atmosphere, or capture him into orbit first, and then introduce him into the atmosphere while keeping him intact. And I think keeping him pointed into the airstream when we uh, deploy the heat shield is probably the best idea instead of coming in backwards and then trying to turn around although we certainly would have the capability to do so so this was my initial thought here and then uh, yeah we'll just uh, test out how long the fairings are check our weight oh good we are still way under five tons so far but um, 
yeah, we'll also top off that fuel tank before I forget about it. And just to make sure all of them are pressurized tanks, they are fantastic. Oh, that's just so cool. <laughs> and, all right, anyway, so we will probably need to hold orientation. This thing will make at least two passes through the atmosphere, uh, one to arrow capture and put it and its uh, parent spacecraft uh, into an orbit. Then the uh, parent spacecraft will decouple, leaving this on a suborbital trajectory, or at least uh, a trajectory that will make it a second pass through the atmosphere. So it will need to be able to orient itself uh, into prograde uh, after it has separated from its, uh, its tug stage or its parent spacecraft. So we're going to need a, a little fuel tank up here, yeah, maybe about that big, and some uh, control thrusters. And the biggins, because why not? If you can want to introduce some authority onto this thing and you've got one hell of an atmosphere to fight against, then uh, you're going to need oomphy kind of thrusters. All right, let's give it a paint job. And now we need to make sure that the heat shield will clear the spacecraft when it is jettisoned. So very large, solid set motors. That's probably the only way to go. Just a uh, quick adjustment of our staging. And now the real problem how to attach it to a spare parent spacecraft that doesn't create a large wiggle. I'll try to bias just a little bit of room here by extending the core fuel tank a little bit. And this is the part that gives me hesitation. It's a tiny strut, or a tiny um, uh, octagonal. And a, uh, a fairly heavy mass, especially with that heat shield being balanced on top of it. So, interesting. So, we'll just uh, check our clearances. It looks, uh, it looks pretty good. I think we can deal with this. And bolt an AJ-10 onto it. Switch it to the model with infinite ignitions. Check our fuel and our delta V. Oh, that's not bad. I don't think we need nearly that much fuel tank. Especially because I want to make it look a little prettier. So, we'll add this, uh, this bottom half tank to here. Top it with fuel, make sure it's a service module tank so it is pressurized. And we'll get its own control thrusters on there because it's definitely going to need them. Alright, and it's going to need uh, independent power and independent comms because this will be acting as our comms relay for the glider itself. So I'll just uh, be using these to kind of beautify it a little bit so I'm not just bolting everything there to the bottom and it will keep things clear of the airstream when we are making our aero capture maneuver because this thing as a whole is going to be passing at least once through Venus's atmosphere so we'll uh, set our boot action group all right uh, I mean other than sans paint job looks pretty good I relatively speaking it's a cylinder with an engine on the bottom so that's you know that's that yeah, all right, and we'll just tuck that in and now to decide on a launch vehicle and I did kind of mull over this a little bit I could not decide uh, we're right at about 10 tons So it is within the delivery capacity of an RA 9 HV with the four uh, RL 10 upper stage But it's kind of right on the border as far as being able to insert itself to a, a Venus trajectory so I decided to pull out the uh, smallest big gun that we have this is the uh, DN9 or the oh boy the DN1B it uh, still has the exact same upper stage as the RA9HV with the four RL10s and uh, those should probably get upgraded but we'll just uh, do a quick double check of our staging because I've been slacking on that and that's interesting Anyway, we'll uh, we'll give it a title, give it a save, just to make sure nothing crashes on me. And I'm going to pull out the new uh, uh, HG3 engines that this uh, system is going to be upgraded with from basically this point on, and then get them into their proper placement. Now, uh, th the new model for these HG3s, they're basically the same engine, just new model. Uh, they're a little bit bigger physically, so we're going to move the boosters down to kind of compensate for that and also make sure everything is fueled so I can check our lift off thrust to weight ratio make sure everything is looking good and uh, so far it is that's fantastic 
Now we are over our pad tonnage, but uh, that has never stopped me, not even once. We will just uh, take some fuel out of the boosters pre-launch and let them fuel on the pad. Speaking of which, it is time to get this thing outside and uh, take a little test. So once uh, KSP decides to load, ah, here we go. Fantastic. And, uh, oh, looks like, yeah, I forgot the uh, booster skirts needed to fuel. But uh, it's fine. Our thrust to weight ratio looks okay. So we'll get the ignition going and get off the launch pad. And it looks like I still need uh, to do some more work on these uh, plume effects. That's interesting. The, uh, they were set properly before. And now they seem to be way too high. Anyway, that's a, that's a problem for me to worry about. Uh, another problem for me to worry about is definitely this uh, oscillation, certainly caused either by that uh, truss piece that we use to mount the glider to its core stage, or the fact that the heat shield is probably heavier than the entire glider itself. Uh, either way, that little bit of persistent wiggle, you can see it there, it's not horrible. There's booster set, and they'll tumble neatly away. And now we get a good look on how off I am on this plume, but... Uh, Now's not the time for me to mess with that. I'll get to it later. But fairings come off, barely. And now we can see very clearly where our wiggle is coming from. And uh, you can see the fairing shimmy a lot. That's uh, certainly quite interesting. And turns out that the uh, fairings for our glider are entirely too long. Uh, one more thing for me to write down on my notepad. and. Don't make adjustments in time warp, or you almost ruin everything. But thankfully, we got that one back. And we'll just uh, try very carefully to put this thing into an orbit. Now, the, uh, the DN series was certainly a bit overkill for such a payload. But uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to change it. Uh, I would like to get these new uh, HG3... Uh, modeled engines into full service. I feel like this is a good way to do it. So there's orbit and we'll go ahead and separate away our core stage. It wasn't even empty. So we have the full like 5100 meters per second of our HV upper stage to play with which is absolutely more than enough to get us to Venus. Um, a lot of overkill here. But now we want to test the rest of the glider so we will just uh, fire up these RL10s and properly deorbit ourselves. We do have a time constraint to work with after all, so uh, we might as well just uh, set these engines and let them burn until uh, we hit Atmo, and then we'll uh, spin the face prograde and uh, start our glider test in earnest, uh, just to make sure that the survivability of the uh, re-entry portion and the survivability of the aero capture portion is sufficient. So, oh, we need to buy more time on our simulation. No big deal. It's only like five grand. We're not very close to bankruptcy. Saw that one coming. We do not have a signal connection, which was a problem. And uh, had we had a connection, maybe I would have folded away those antennas or those solar panels. They weren't. They were just not going to make it. And they're not all that necessary. But uh, now the bigger problem. I can't really test anything because I don't have a comms network still. Oh, connection, fantastic. Ditch all the fairings, get our glider clear. Everything uh, seems to be working properly. Now we have all the air fin, the foils locked into place and it just kind of writes itself. That's what you want with a good aircraft. <laughs> It'll go from a terminal spin in unstable air and just face right to its uh, velocity vector. Now, I thought I was able to solve the roll problem in the VAB. I was not. And I also should have unlocked these fuels because now the engines are telling me no propellant. And I can't really get back to the VAB and pick this thing back up again. So we're just going to have to do a um, performance test with a full fuel load. Which is probably not how we will be doing it once we are at Venus. But uh, all the same. Still just a lot of fun. Just... Uh, push the stall limits, see what our glide slope looks like, try to sp get it into a flat spin, fail to get it into a flat spin, and just put it through its maneuverability paces. And here on Earth, which would be a good high-altitude simulation of Venus, it seems to work pretty well. 
and oh yeah, I have atmospheric autopilot installed. That roll problem, no longer an issue. Uh, I don't know why it took me almost four hours of development time on this spacecraft to figure this out, but with atmospheric autopilot, this thing flies just true and straight as an arrow. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, it becomes predictable. It was already pretty easy to handle. It just had that low list in the roll. And uh, I know this isn't really much to look at because it was at night. That was my bad timing, but... Uh, it, this thing really was just a pleasure to fly, and I wish I had brought it down over land so that I could test out the uh, landing gears, but uh, I will probably get to all of that off camera. I think we've uh, messed with this thing uh, wholly enough for... <laughs> it's enough filler, and it's time to get to the actual flights. So I'm pretty happy, not only with this design, but with its performance. Uh, I just can't wait to see how it does on Venus. And there's our screenshot of the day, and we'll just... Uh, try futilely to get it into a nice splashdown but that's going to do it for this episode everybody thank you so much for hanging out i do appreciate it and i will see all of you in the next one so until then see you later